friends, I had somebody ask me a question. Actually, it wasn't even a question. Somebody just made a comment, you know, just a bold statement on one of my video comment sections um, and said, there is no such thing as the rapture. The rapture is a fable. It's made up by men and it's, it's recent and it's a new belief. And um, I, I had to, I usually try to answer uh, people and uh, I answer a lot of comments and questions and and uh, personal messages about such things and uh, I realized that after answering this person I, I realized I don't think I've ever actually shared that in a video this is really powerful stuff I mean really powerful stuff so I'm gonna show you where Jesus does elude to exactly that the rapture I'm gonna keep this very simple because I really want your eyes to be open to this if your eyes are closed there are those who do not have ears to hear or eyes to see and although I have no power in opening your eyes or ears the best I can do is make something clear so hopefully this will be seen um, go with me to one of the most famous rapture event descriptions um, the Apostle Paul wrote about in 1 Thessalonians 4. Go to verse 16, and we're, we're just going to start there, and I'm going to show you how this cross-references with what Jesus said. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the point I want to make, that last part. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. These are people who have perished, who are not living at the time of this event, the rapture. They will come out of their graves because they have died in Christ. They have died with a belief in him. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is, is jump over, jump back to John, John 11. And in John 11, we have, uh, this is the death of Lazarus and um, and him coming back to life because Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And so this is a chapter about resurrection. It's about the dead coming back to life. And within this part of scripture, we see Lazarus's sister, Martha, is talking to Jesus. She's upset because Lazarus is dead. And she says, you know, if you were here, you wouldn't have died. Um, if we go to 11.25, uh, well, go back to 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection uh, at the last day. Jesus replies here in 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, he shall live. He that believes in me, though he were dead, shall live. Does that sound a little bit like what I just read? Because it should. Because he's alluding to that. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, shall he live. We're talking about resurrection here. We're talking about coming back to life. We're talking about getting new bodies even. Now, now go back to 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to read the, the next part, which is verse 17, 417. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Those of us who are alive, we shall meet the Lord in the air. We'll be caught up together in the air. And in 1, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 2, 3, in there, it says that how, how that's going to happen will be changed, our bodies from corruptible to incorruptible in the twinkling of an eye. Um, but but take, take 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, and now relate it to John eleven twenty six, where Jesus continues talking to Martha, and he says, And whoever liveth... I'm speaking King James. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
believest thou this? So he says, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Paraphrasing. That's what he's saying. That's what Paul writes about. It says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That means we'll never die. And that's exactly what he says. And whoever shall live and believe in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And Martha didn't understand that because she answers, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come unto the world. She she didn't quite understand that, but Jesus knew that he wasn't, he knew that she wouldn't understand that in, in, in its full extent. Jesus said that so that those of us studying this 2,000 years later would be able to cross-reference and understand that what Jesus says here in John 11, 25 and 26 is exactly what, John, what Paul is saying in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Jesus did allude to and explain the resurrection being in two parts. The dead in Christ shall rise first and they shall live. And those who live and believe in him shall never die. There's no other way to explain John eleven twenty six. 26. But when you pair that with 1 Thessalonians, it makes complete sense that Jesus was talking about the rapture of the church being in two parts. The dead in Christ rise first, and then we that are alive and remain will be caught up in the air with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I hope that your eyes are open to this because this is true and this is going to happen. There are many more scriptures that have to do with this. Like I said before, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, 53. Also, you can go to Isaiah 26, 19 through 21. It talks about the same thing. I, let me just go there real quick. Isaiah 26, 19. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for the dew is the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The dead are going to rise. It's right in the beginning. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. That means those who are dead in Christ. And then verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is overpassed. That is being caught up in the air. Those of us who are the bride, we go into what's called the wedding chamber, if you understand Hebraic custom and tradition. We go into the wedding chambers and we shut the doors. As we know, in Matthew, the parable of the ten virgins, the groom shut the door. Some were shut in and some were shut out. If we go, and it says, it says, hide thyself. We're hiding in Christ. For a little moment until the indignation is overpassed. Indignation means righteous anger. It means wrath. Righteous wrath. And that is exactly what's going to happen for seven years on the earth. By the way, in Hebraic custom and tradition, the groom and the bride go into the wedding chamber for seven days. Okay, this is one week. Biblically, a week is just a period of seven. It could be seven days, seven years. 700 years, 7,000 years. And then lastly here, Isaiah 26, 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also disclose her blood and shall, and shall no more cover her slain. Pretty obvious what's going on here. It's just boom, 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 19, 20, 21. The dead in Christ shall rise first. The rest of us, we all go up into the wedding chambers, into heaven for seven years. During the period that God comes out of his place and pours out his wrath on the earth for seven years. Okay. Hopefully that is enough to convince one person. If one person says to me, wow, that makes sense. Thank you. Then this video is worth it. Thanks for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe if you haven't. Feel free to 
engage in conversation below, being, of course, loving and kind to each other. Um, more coming soon, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. God bless. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this it mean, that it means cut, take two.